All right, kids out there, welcome to the Uncensored Plateau, where Zachary Shiloh used to roam around the earth, where he now has universal grounding. And it's usually known as the Black Lions Domain, but not today, kids. <laughs> it's been two years and a day in the making. So with that said, Welcome to the season premiere of the Black Dragon's Lair with Karen Therese. And she's now a three times best-selling author. I'm still a mother of three. She's uh, got this weird thing going on. She was married about two years ago, but then she was single. And then now she's happily taken by one Mr. Caleb. And thank you very much for having her, dude. Uh, some guys on the planet would probably be jealous of you right now. Especially, I'm not gonna front. Me, I'm kind of one of them, but God bless you. God bless you. Okay, so she's the dragon duel. She's much, much more. And we're about to shoot the shit for God knows how long, kids. I say hopefully within less than an hour or a pinch over. Not two hours for sure. But anyways, welcome to Black Dragon's Lair, my dear Karen. How are you? I am doing very well. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Season premiere, so exciting. And I love, I love the name change. That's, I'm here for it. The Black Dragon Lair. Yes. <laughs> yes. I was thinking so to change that. it to Black Dragon's Domain. Just just the, <laughs> I love that too. Dominion. Okay, let's go with it. Go. Black it's Dragon's Dominion. Domain. That's my shit. There we go. I like it. I love oh, it. Oh, yeah. I I've got it. kids out there. I actually have a new term, and uh, Karen likes it so much. Uh, mm -hmm. We are dragonpreneurs, kids. We are entrepreneurs with dragon souls and spirits and energies. So mm -hmm. if you start hearing that shit start to rise, uh, you can kind of thank me and you can thank yeah, her for You heard it first. You, you heard, heard it first, first. Kids. And also, Karen, from what she's told me, she's actually having a podcast of her own. And mm -hmm. when I heard it, I got aroused. I said, oh, shit, this is going to be yeah. great. Especially when she said, villain's era. I said, yeah. Uh oh, she'll she'll explain it a little bit later, but shit, on it's been two years in a day since we last recorded. No, that's so so much has changed since twenty twenty one. I mean, so much. Yeah, I was still married before. I was in the middle of the craziest part of my life. I tried to leave that marriage. Um, ended up having some polyamorous crazy shit go down with some twin flame stuff. And flame activations are a whole new fucking ball game well, and me. then was very much just in um in the underworld for a good hot minute and last year finally started poking my head back around but there was a giant wasteland that i had to traverse and then finally found my way back to the mountain found my way back to the river back where where it needs to be which is helping healers innovators intuitives empaths to step more fully into their gifts not only so they can take leadership positions within their families and their businesses but also eventually within actual government positions because oh. the new earth that we all dream of is not it's not going to just all of a sudden become an anarchical utopia yes will we get there eventually sure but is that going to take some time and some leaders who are willing to think completely outside the box and redefine what we want and start by just giving basic human needs to every individual and then building from there that's what like that's what turns me on the most is how can we take all this somato spiritual metaphysical manifestation law of attraction wealth code stuff and put that in a place where everyone's getting benefited by it that people on the other side of the planet like let's really turn those butterfly wings into hurricanes but instead of hurricanes let's like make it fucking rain rainbows and Dude. I hear you, hon. Oh God! And you and I—we've been close for now over two years, and 
it still mm-hmm. trips me out that I've been around you more than almost anybody else in the Ascension, uh, Magdalene and Birth series, more than mm-hmm. anybody else. And I'm not bitching about that because you are really top rank. Like you really have these visions and you wrote about them. And yes, it did. seems to me, it seems to me that they're manifesting all of them. Like I I will be honest, kids. I bought the book called Magdalene uh, Rising or Magdalene Coast. Magdalene Coast, yeah. When it was exactly released, out of my love and respect for her. But I didn't read it until today because I wanted to be fresh. I wanted it to be setting in my mind so i'm reading the book and she's just laying it down from the foundation and it's my ode to alexander hamilton man like oh that man changed my life i was <laughs> dying laughing when i saw lynn uh, manuel i said oh oh okay where we're going with this yeah. oh, the man. name of the chapter for y'all out there is i'm not throwing away my shot and I do quote Hamilton many, many times throughout the chapter. It's like the thing that I held to tie the whole chapter together was this phenomenon of Hamilton. No one knew Alexander Hamilton except for he was the dude on the nickel and something about the treasury and he got shot in a duel. When that, he was so much more than that. And I feel like if we, and it took someone else to write his story too. It took his wife coming back after he had cheated on her and all this horrendous stuff back in the 17 and 1800s when that was just like not you do not have a torrid affair and write it all down and then your wife like comes back later and is like you know what I'm gonna make sure that your legacy survives like that's just crazy to me and I used that whole musical as the benchmark of like we are on we are in the middle of a spiritual revolution and world war three is not happening anywhere except for in the mental plane it's somewhere where you either decide that you live heaven on earth, somewhere where we're not. I'm not experiencing inflation or fucking economic distress or any of the shit going on. Like, I don't experience that. My clients don't experience that. My friends and family don't experience that. We are living in this beautiful health, wealth, abundance, being able to serve others. But I hear about it. I hear about it from other people, like a friend of a friend <laughs> or, you know, something going on in yoga class. And I'm all like, the what got humped? There was a hot and a what? Like, what? Oh, I didn't even realize. So people are like, Karen, how are you going to be president when you don't even have a tap on the current political climate? And I'm like, I'm, I have no, I don't give a shit about what's going on right now because I'm not supposed to be in it right now. I'm getting my foundational work set. I'm building the empire, building heart with leadership to be a big enough name that when I start campaigning or when I start wanting to talk to senators, they look at their calendar and they're like, oh shit, Karen from Hartman Leadership's coming in. They treat me with the same respect that people from Chevron and from Pfizer are getting. Ah, yes, I love that fully. I love that fully. All right, so the, the chapter starts off with you circa 2016. And I believe your daughter, Zenovit, is uh, completely born. Oh, this is so it's like 2018 then because she was born in 2017 she's about to be six yeah i think it's 2018 ish that sounds right yeah so i was reading it i said oh okay so this is how she's planning on taking over the world piece by piece by piece by piece and some people would say oh that's crazy how is this chick gonna do anything with this but i said She's got not only dragon power, but she's got knowledge. She's got knowledge of American presence. She's got, uh, who did you mention that was a feminist? Uh, Susan B. Anthony. Uh, yeah, she, Susan B. Anthony, a bunch. So I was raised in the Unitarian Universalist tradition, and that is based on very fundamental principles of, you know, like independence and inherent worth and dignity of every person, the right of a spiritual path for each an individual. And people like Thomas Jefferson and um, Susan B. Anthony and 
Catherine Holt. There were just so many women in the women's suffrage movements and other times that Abigail Adams, that these were their same principles. These were their same guiding principles. And so the idea that women could and always have been like the moms are the ones that make a change. Mm -hmm. Go look at anything. And like the moms are the ones that finally got us out of Vietnam. The moms are the ones that finally get us out of the depression. The moms finally put enough pressure on the necks of the senators. It's going to be the moms that get the gun laws changed. It's going to get be the moms who do any of that. And it's calling up not only mothers, but also these weird, witchy, wild people. You don't have to be a mom. You can have a business or a podcast or anything. Like I tell people constantly, my work isn't about being a mother specifically it's about can you mother yourself and can you be a mother to mother earth this new earth that we're giving we're we're giving birth to we have been birthing since 2012 really that ascension's just been like and it's not slowing down it's really not slowing down and if you still get like affected by the full moons and by jerk jupiter and aries like the sun conjunct in aries and like all of that <laughs> astrological shit still affects you then you're not anchored enough and you're going to keep getting swirled around when instead you got woken up however long ago you're supposed to be your pillar already because your job is to wake other people up mm -hmm. so if you're if you're just sitting there like trying to protect your little fire and like oh shit the wind's coming in and you're not doing everything to make your fire so big that it doesn't matter if a hurricane comes in your fire and your hearth and your home are a safe haven for people then you're you're actually being selfish you're being the most selfish person on the planet if you like wake up long enough to make a few million and then you're like okay i'm good or you wake up enough to leave the marriage like i know so many people who have done a few of the things that god called them to and then they get comfortable and it's not the dragon's path is not comfortable it is literally trial by fire go into the refiners refiner's fire come out bang 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 forge that blade a little bit more back into the fire pull it out bang 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 like that is your life rebirth becomes a motherfucking lifestyle that is not bullshit kids that is not bullshit i can testify to this many times over i can testify to Oh man, oh man, oh man. And I'm the only one in my own family that does this shit. The only one. Yeah. And that's the thing too, is there's so many of us. I am too, right? I'm the only one in my family that does that. Even yes, my amazing partner Caleb, love him to death. He and I have to have so many times that I check myself and I'm like, I could literally blow his brain apart by like ramming his system with all of the things that I know and understand but why like that seems like a real messy cleanup for me so here's like like I drip him these things and it's not the same level like once you're anchored in new earth and you have the people that you were called to wake up again like and bring to you you don't get like frustrated you don't get like come on hey how do you not get this you get attuned to them and you know when to like I just drop a little breadcrumb or show a little example or maybe have a little bit more of an intense conversation but then know to give it space uh -huh. right? like, i'm gonna drop this and i know that you're probably gonna get triggered and you're probably gonna drop into a low and whatever i am here for you when you are ready but i'm still not gonna like i'm not gonna apologize for what i said <laughs> like, it's, it, it had to be said and it had to be a little harsh and I still love you anyway, right? And oh. that's the type of relationships that like, they don't talk about divorce in the Bible for a reason. And one of the reasons is, is that like, when we're dating nowadays in this millennial Gen Z, whatever bullshit of ghosting and swiping and I don't, fuck, I've literally never installed a dating app ever in my life. I do not understand this world, but like, that's the world that exists. We have this idea of like, we can practice. Like, oh, if I don't like this one, I can throw it back. Like, oh, I'm going to catch this one from the sea, fuck around with this fish. Oh, never mind. Throw it back. <laughs> I don't care how traumatized I just fucked up this fish while I was playing with it, right? Instead of this, like, no, how can I nurture? And my really, my triggers are coming up and your triggers are coming up. Because there are certain triggers that literally will not come up unless you are in a relationship, whether it's a, a parent dynamic, whether it's a... Uh, sibling dynamic or friendship dynamic or lover dynamic there are certain triggers that happen 
that you can do all of the solo work you want. You can go be a fucking hermit on the mountain and an ashram and go silent and do all of that. And you will not actually reach your fullest potential because you didn't work through the peopling. There's plenty of people on this planet that can like bilocate and manifest and do all this crazy spiritual shit. And they don't live anywhere near people. And what I want is to help bring that like the people and that crazy magic like Merlin status shit can happen. Oh Again. yeah. I would love for that. And that's why it fucks with you. Because you really want there to be a world where please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, my dear milf billionaire president to be, where healthcare is uh, affordable. We have things that's kind of like cannabis, but it's more legalized. Yeah, so and, like my my tagline that I always say, like very like everyone's heard this a million times if you've been in my world at all, is I want to help create and nurture a world where every single man, woman, and child has access to clean water, healthy food, safe shelter, open source education, and medicine from east, west, north to south, whether it's synthetic or natural. Because I do believe that there are people out there that synthesize medication can help them. And I also think that there's a whole lot of people that really just need to get really fucked up on hallucinogens and it'll help. <laughs> like, uh, keep going. You should, you should have that right, right? If you want to be a hardcore vegan, cool, but you shouldn't, but like, let's first just clean up the food supply. How about the fact that so many, food, like, chicken and eggs and milk and so many things that we are allowed to eat in america are literally banned in multiple other countries right like just getting the world on the same page of like huh all of these countries have decided that this chemical that we use to wash our eggs is really bad why don't we figure that out too right or and then even further than that I'm a Trekkie. I, I was raised by Trekkies. I am like we literally had collector's plates of all of the next generation characters on my wall growing up. Like that's how, like my dad had a cookbook. We would have Star Trek themed dinners. To the day he could tell you like, give him a plot and he'll tell you the name of that fucking episode in the first generation of Star Trek. Like that's how Trekkie my family was. So I'm, I'm three years old. I got no concept of time or anything. And I'm watching Picard and I'm watching Spock and I'm watching even like Deep Space Nine and things like that mm -hmm. and we've got tablets and they've got these replicators and they've got these things that they can just like heal broken bones and in my mind at that age I didn't understand that while my dad would watch like documentaries from World War II that I wasn't just watching a documentary from 2420 right so in my brain that future of Gene Roddenberry is the fucking future so what do i need to do to anchor in and can we do that without the nuclear winter and like all these other fucked up things that he says happens before they get to this this place right i would like to circumvent a lot of that suffering on a global level if possible because i already know that that is something we can have i know about the star beings i know about all of the aliens like yes we can go there too but they're not even going to show up until we as humans show that we're willing to take care of our planet and our people you heard it first kids uh this trekkie believes that there's aliens out in the universe and i'm not bullshitting with her either i believe it i believe that there's uh aliens out there it's not mm -hmm. a conspiracy theory this is fact they're, they're slowly starting to link it like they're starting to try the mainstream media is slowly getting it drip 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 but i'm sure if you're all the way into this podcast y'all already know this is what i'm saying that's why i'm dropping it here like you're not <laughs> nobody in this audience is like oh no you know we've all probably talked to an octorian at some point or another whether we were sober or high on lsd we have had <laughs> lyra in, right in front of our faces and we're like holy shit you are from lyra fuck okay cool like, we know, we all know. <laughs> if you know, yeah. you know, and I'm sure that y'all know. <laughs> Thank you very much, kids out there, for actually listening. Bye. Oh, no, we're, we're still going. <laughs> we're still going. All right, there. And you kept on just rocking piece by piece by piece. So as we wrap up this part of the story, <clears throat> you mentioned that you and your sons before Xena's born 
you're just like driving along or something. Your eldest is rapping one part. And then finally, I got your middle child's name in my head. And I'm not going to forget it now. Now I'm not going to forget it because he says, I am Alexander. I'm like, oh. okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. I am the A L A X E N Z. Yeah, we are meant to be. That's literally how my middle son Alexander learned how to spell his name, was rapping the Hamilton rap all the time. And my oldest can rap like the hardest thing in that, Guns and Shits from Lafayette. And I'm like, for a white kid from the suburbs, you can, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm okay. As we wrap up this uh, Magdalene Codes uh, story, hun. Do your kids still rap it to, today? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh. My kids all know that song. Even my youngest, Nina, now she, like, we all sing that. We constantly, like, they'll ask me to watch Hamilton a couple times a year on <laughs> Disney. And we listen to the, like, if, like, even Caleb knows if I'm having a bad day, the only thing you have to do is turn on the Hamilton soundtrack. And I will be out of it in within the first song. I'm out. I'm like, hey. <laughs> yeah, I remember reading your chapter and then you said within the first two minutes, I lost my shit and it was so good. I just listened to yeah. this thing for two and a half hours. I said, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And then I when you go and you see it live or even on Disney Plus, it streams on Disney Plus. The thing about Hamilton is that it's not a musical in the idea that there's like any talking in between the songs. You're not missing any of the stories in between the songs. So if you listen to that whole thing, like cover to cover, I think there's literally one or, or two little tiny preludes that are not in the like recorded album that you mm -hmm. would see if you go and like saw it live or saw it on Disney plus, like literally I can only think of one tiny little thing that it's not on. It's not one of the songs. No, I don't know sure. why, but like everything else is literally song and scene leads into song and scene that leads into song and scene the whole time. <laughs> that was beautiful. Like when I actually did finally go and see it, it was like, I I'd already seen it and it was so amazing to finally see the different characters and like, Get that like oh this person's voice sounded like this person's voice so I thought this was like Washington but it's not Washington who sings that song it's it's somebody else right maybe it's Jefferson mm -hmm. or whatever right so oh, yeah. one it's it's amazing it's one of those things that I think if we all just took a chapter out of it like any of it just everybody just go and watch it or listen to it there is going to be a piece in there that calls to you. There's the Skylar sisters. There's the women in there. There's so many pieces that are just like, America went through some shit to get to where it's at. And maybe <laughs> we should have a little bit more respect and not just focus on all of the like shadowy history all the time. Right on. I'm still in awe of that play as I'm listening to like certain words right now. Mm -hmm. Wow, that, I see why she put it in that book. Speaking of books, dear, let's transition to your latest called Birth Three by our friend Janet Brent. Oh, dear God, hon, when Janet Brent and I were talking, I didn't expect your name to be thrown into that ring. I was expecting uh, some people that were in the Rebel Romance story or excuse me, Rebel Romance book series. When you came along, I said, Jan, can you please confirm this? And she said, yes. I said, oh shit, this is gonna be a good book. This is gonna be a good book. And then lo and behold, I bought it and I did read it. I said, okay, oh damn. And this everything that you told me two and a half, I mean, two point years ago, <laughs> yeah, right. everything. From the birth of your eldest to the birth of your youngest, I said, no, oh, man, she's still alive. God bless the child. Yeah, that is badass. That is badass. Oh, man. So, I survived a lot. <laughs> go, babe. Oh, what made you decide to tell your story of your three kids in that book? I think because for me, I did so much healing. That, like I see women out there that are like doing womb healings and doing these clearings and doing this like 
like step into your power stuff. And I did that for myself through the birthing of my children. Like I was able to reclaim so much sovereignty just by having the first experience of being a very young mom. Um, I was I was barely 20 years old right when he was born. And he was born the day the housing market collapsed in 2008. So I was thrown into it. Not only was I a young mom that wasn't, didn't know how to take care of myself. I had only had a breast reduction a couple of years before. So I wasn't able to nurse him. There was all this other stress. And now the housing market, like now I have to live with my fucking parents. Um, and that wasn't necessarily the healthiest place for me to be based on all my stuff with my own parents, <laughs> right? So, um, and then when I finally did like, work myself through deep, deep, deep depression and fibromyalgia diagnosis. Like I spent the first couple of years of my oldest son's life pretty much bedridden. Walking to and from the bathroom was even painful. And I just, I didn't want to survive anymore. And that's when I found cannabis. <laughs> that's when I found cannabis and I was able to actually get enough control of my pain that I was able to then start going to therapy and doing these other things. And when I went, when I found out I was pregnant with my middle, started going I, I knew I wanted to do a water birth I had gone to doula training I was like okay I'm gonna I'd wanted to do it naturally with Leo that didn't work out I was young I ended up having an epidural it was still a beautiful vaginal birth so at least I like didn't have the cesarean which was like my biggest fear but every time I walked to that hospital when I was pregnant with Alex I was having insane panic attacks like my blood pressure was through the roof and they're like, well, we don't know what's wrong. I'm like, I'm telling you that if you came and met me at my car on State Street before I pulled in the parking lot, my blood pressure is fine. It's when I come in here, I start remembering my birth and how I was treated like a number and how none of my birth plan went the way I wanted it to. And that my doula had to literally like break her own rules. Luckily, she had already like passed the state test, just didn't have the paperwork saying she was a midwife to save to save me from a cesarean with my oldest. All of this kept running back. So how can I claim power? Fuck this. Look straight at my husband at the time. I was like, I'm I'm the one birthing this baby. I'm doing it at home. Period. <laughs> like I'm doing, I'm not doing this anywhere else. I hate it. Like I still remember my oldest is going to be 15 minutes here. And I still remember that 12 minute car ride in labor to the hospital. And I was like, no. Fuck even the rest of the hospital part. Le laboring in the car sucks. I don't ever want to do that ever again. And so telling Alex's story and how supported I was and how a bunch of my psychic gifts kind of started coming online with him was amazing. But then there was too much tethering with him. There was so much energetic tethering. There was so mm -hmm. much stuff I had to work through with him that when I um, surprisingly became pregnant with Zena after my parents said we had bought the house from them um, they moved out and I surprisingly got pregnant with Zena. Everything about her pregnancy was different. And I started feeling pretty early on that I was going to, like, she was not going to wait for any doula or midwife to show up. That I was just, she was just going to be there. And that is literally what ended up happening with her. So this, this journey of like, I found my voice. I was online with Alex, like po posting pictures of my cloth diapers and posting brelfie after brelfie breastfeeding selfie. Um, promoting like going and doing um, feed-ins where you like go to a, a organization that someone recently got kicked out of for breastfeeding and like 50 of us would show up and all whip our tits out at the same time and nurse our babies <laughs> like what you gonna do about it like the cannabis like I they knew me on the hill as the cannabis mom I would have Alex in my back in his little baby carrier on the back seat and then I had a big old baby bump on the front pregnant with Zena Leo next to me in his little shirt asking people to get signatures for medical cannabis like they like senators even now remember that person now I weigh 50 pounds more and my hair was down to my ass so I don't look the same but they remember the breastfeeding backpack wearing like baby carrying mom that was there during the campaign so all these little tiny pieces of me that I found and then they fell and then I found and then they fell and then I found and then they fell that's what I wanted to share in that story was like, be fucking proud of all the places that you stood your ground and you, you did what you needed for you because there's no way that me giving birth 15 years ago ever was like, you know what, one day I'm going to be present. <sighs> like that was something maybe seven-year-old Karen said once or twice and then probably got shut down real quick about like, it's not the way that I will, like, I will die on this fucking hill 
that we are all dragons. We are all large clear lights. We are all meant to just be a pillar of light and to be who we were born to be and to just be us fearlessly, authentically, unfuckwithably ourselves. And right on, babe. Who I am. That's you. Right on, that's babe. And that's why it fucks with you because it's the truth. I've been doing this online coaching bit for almost three years. And the last year kind of was hell in a sense. Mm -hmm. It helped me in the sense of trying to build a reputation. It helped me in the sense of becoming more interconnected with people. But I've woken up a little bit more to not just other people. I woke up to myself and I'm saying to myself, uh-oh, this is the real me. This is the real me. I, I can't sugarcoat. I try to. I try to. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it doesn't work because I noticed that these hats, they will still do the same shit. And I said to myself, I'm not doing that. Mm -mm. I'm not doing that anymore. And, well, and the, the Dragon's me. Way is such a unique... Like I tell people all the time, I might have paid one way and y'all come and meet me at my camp, but that doesn't mean that everyone walks down the clear. Like some people find my camp and they're all brambled up in the bushes. Like I see some rustling. I'm like, what the fuck's that? And then all of a sudden they'll merge. Like I need some water, fucking clothes, right? It's like I've had <laughs> some clients show up in some bad fucking shape. Mm -hmm. and other people walk up to me and they're like, you're like you seem like you're fine they're like oh yeah no i traveled down here in my carriage i just heard there was a crazy dragon lady over here that i needed to learn from and i'm just here to like vibe it out like literally once you know like i know that i am the crazy dragon lady in the woods you have to go through some psycho labyrinths to find me i tend to send you back out into the labyrinth sometimes like oh here's a little nugget but here you go come back we'll have fun and i've also been hiding because I have had several experiences that like showed me how powerful the magic actually is. And that's something that it's 144. So let's fucking talk about this. Sure. Um, <laughs> that I think that more of us need to call out is like, again, you can get to this level where like, I am very comfortable in my life, but the second I get uncomfortable, I immediately start being like, Hey, now what? Mm -hmm. I, mm -mm, nope. Mm -mm. I'm going to get, if I start getting too comfortable, I'm going to stagnate. I need to keep growing my roots. I need to keep going so that I can eventually bust out of this container and get repotted into another and another and another and keep growing. So I think that that's one thing is that when you can allow yourself to, to no longer be on this like personal development, I have to get better. Like the idea that I can fix me is just an asinine idea honestly like who's the I and who's the me in that if you can just decide and said I want to experience as much as possible in this life and then who do I need to be to be the type of person who has those experiences that's what allows you to continue to stretch because you have the amazing lover and the awesome kids and the house that takes care of you and your business and all of these and then you're like okay I'm ready to travel and now you have a whole new fucking like, okay, how do you get passports? Blah, 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 blah. Right mm -hmm. now you're traveling. Okay, now I want to start building orphanages. Like you have to, you don't even know what is out there. Like the dreams that I have now, four or five years ago, me who started my coaching business, so that was like five years ago, I, she had some of them. There's still some of those same core visions of like big stadiums. I've done the books, right? But again, even five years ago, me was not on the internet saying I'm going to be president. That didn't start until about 2020. And then I got quiet again about it. For, like I said it real loud for a while. And then I was like, mm, maybe, maybe not. And I had to go through my own personal shit to get back to be like, oh, no, it's like strengthening the muscle again. It's like I got into the analogy that came recently actually was like that I got into a massive car accident. And I was in the hospital for a good month of like 2021, let's say. And then around 2022, summertime, I'm allowed to start going to like rehab and all of that. And now I've finally gone to a point where like I can pick up those 150 pound weights again. I can have those 
five figure days. I can have those amazing successes. I can hold the relationships and all this stuff. And now I'm to the point, okay, I'm moving from 150 to 200. Oh, <laughs> of course. So can you allow yourself to see that in your life? Can you be okay with sometimes shit just, and maybe it's not a physical car accident, but have you had a fucking car accident in some other, like my marriage and family life was a fucking train wreck. The way mm-hmm. that I ended up with that. It was a, like, that's going to be one of the tell-all chapters in my own book eventually. Like, I don't, mm-mm. That was some fucked stuff that ended up happening because I couldn't just own who I was and cut the fucking cord. That's what I mean by the villain era. So let's segue. This is what I mean by the villain era and what we're going to be talking about in my podcast that I'm launching with my good friend, Natalie Byers. Um, sometime this summer, it's called Super Conscious Sirens. And the idea that so many women and men come into their power, become the black black sheep, become the monster, the whatever. Like even Taylor Swift says it like I'm the monster on the hill, too big to play, too big to hang out. Do you know what I mean? Like that sort of like, I know I'm big and I'm loud and I'm awkward and I'm kind of even sort of scary. Like who the fuck messes around with dragons? It's like, hi, yeah, I help humans turn into dragons. Like that's what I do for fun, right? It's like, Holly Ma, who's like, hmm, I'm going to eat demons for breakfast. Nom, 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 nom. Like, yeah, there are <laughs> those of us that that's what, that's what we're here to do. And can you own that piece of you, right? Like, what if Ursula was actually not as evil as everyone says she was? Like, yeah. right? Like, what if we could actually leave the Minotaur alone? Like, what the fuck did he ever do to you? He's just hanging out in his labyrinth. Y'all are the ones who keep trying to steal his whatever and so he's eating your villagers like most monsters are actually not bothering anyone until some human comes along and is like i need to slay you right or they build a village right on top of their like sacred grounds like the humans come and fuck it up so what can we do from the monster's perspective not in a like again not in like a shadowy evil way but like i want to go burn down some villages and See what they build instead. Like, not in a mean way, but like, you have a really corrupt king. So, I'm going to blast the king. And I'm really sorry that some other houses might get burned in the process. But I trust you people to figure it out. Oh, right? Man. That's some of our, some of us, that is our medicine. And there are too many people that are trying to stay palpable, like palatable to others. I can't eat. Spicy food the way that my ex-husband could eat spicy food, okay? I will literally never understand how he ate it and it didn't fuck up his stomach and he wasn't crying the next morning on the toilet. I don't understand it, okay? Some people can do that. Some people like it that hot. What if that's just your personality? What if that is your medicine that you are just meant to be that potent like fucking lightning? Whoa, that's the truth. Oh, man. And a certain woman, I'm not going to say any names, she was telling me, oh, you got to be lighter. You got to be more understanding, this, that, and that. I was at work sometime after I'm stopping to deal with this. And you're going to love this. All right. So we're both 1990s kids. She was born about two years younger than me. And I'm just thinking that way, thinking and thinking, thinking, thinking. Then, bitch by Meredith Brooks played in my head randomly. And I'm saying to myself, oh shit, I'm a prick. <laughs> I'm a prick. And then I just owned it. I said, I'm a prick. I'm a child, I'm a lover, I'm a father, I'm a sinner, I'm a saint. And then <laughs> it just worked. <laughs> yep. I do not feel the shame. And yep, there you go, hon. And I was just owning that. And I that said, that my one, one day, I said, totally I'm a prick, totally I'm a child, down. I'm a lover, I'm a father, I'm a sinner, I'm a saint. And I'm not sorry. Uh, it's my human nature. It's my yeah. human nature. Yeah, exactly. And the fun of it is that we get to play with the human nature of it and then conceptualize like, 
like, let's be honest. There's no way that I actually think that I'm going to be president of the United States of the current system. That mm-hmm. that reality is so fucking asinine. That's the other reason why I'm like, I don't really care about what's going on right now. Because intergalactic emissary or like ambassador to the Vulcans, like shit like that actually in my brain makes more sense, but nothing like that exists in this realm yet. So the thing that my human can attach to that gives me that level of quote unquote power that then would benefit others is president of the United States, right? Prime minister of England, like wherever I could be the most powerful because then I can be the one that's holding the vision. And I know that my vision is pure. I know that I'm here to be resourced. It's literally in my human design to be like money and resources just fall from the sky. I don't really do marketing strategies. And it's why I've never said that I'm a business coach because what I do with my clients is I help them see what mountain they were here. Like there's that quote from Martin Luther King Jr. That's like, if you don't, if you haven't found something to die for, then what are you living for? Sort of idea. I don't remember exactly the quote, but that's the idea of the quote. And like, we all have a mountain that we came to die on that we are like, I will, I will die on this fucking hill. You can tell me all day, every day that I'm this, that, and the third, or I'm a horrible human or blah, blah, blah. But I know that I am here to help transition this planet to a place that is very similar to that reality that Gene Roddenberry showed that three-year-old here. I want that reality so bad. I want that reality so bad. And the more I say that over and over, and I have other people like you that start saying it and my clients that start saying it, like it just becomes this like actual, like my light just gets brighter and brighter more and more. My, You know, it's like, like one of those things that the image that's coming to my mind is the Disney Pixar movie Cars and how at the very end of it, they show the map and how before Radiator Springs wasn't even on the map, but then because Lightning McQueen was there and all the things that happened, they like I know they they say that like oh it put me on the map, but like literally give yourself something that you can actually connect to. Like I have three kids, Disney, Pixar, Cars. Yeah, I've watched that movie eighteen bajillion times. You can bet your ass. So when I think that one day my name, someone's gonna say Karen Terrace, and it's gonna give others the same thing as like Marianne Williamson or Tony Robbins or Mel Brooks mm-hmm. or anything like that. like okay then I'll just keep going and I'll keep going and I'll keep talking about dragons and I'll keep talking about following your light no matter what society says because being a white suburban housewife in Utah okay that's where I'm at y'all I'm in Salt Lake City Utah yeah choosing to leave my children with their father When I knew that their dad was like, we were in a very toxic relationship, but at the end of the day, I could have taken them with me and we would have been in a homeless shelter or I could leave them there and I could now be walking them into like an actual safe and stable, like nice three bedroom, two bathroom home and like everything else that happened over the last two years. That's villain era shit. (laughs) Be able to walk away from everything that you built I was the home birthing, homesteading, canning, cloth diapering, breastfeeding, Pinterest mom on the hill campaigning. And I walked away from all of it because I knew that I wouldn't make it to my daughter's 18th birthday without killing myself if I kept in that life. Something was was literally sucking me down. And that part of me finally again the rehabbing the reconditioning the getting yourself to understand that that might be a part but I didn't lead with that I got to the end of this podcast before even mentioning that right because that's Mm -hmm. not who I am that is just a huge part of why I know that here we are wrapping around two years later and in a lot of ways I'm still talking about the same shit I was talking about two years ago (laughs) <laughs> this is the path that I'm meant to be on I might have strayed I might have fallen I might have done all sorts of shit to get away from this path but Gus and Gaia think... has been like no oh that's another thing that I wanted to mention thank you for a great segue alright so me and Karen we've been keeping in touch for years and we've done some some of our programs in the most recent called PowerPlay, she 
has this brand new term called Gus. I lost my shit. I said, <laughs> and then go and behold, it is what we would in the Christian world call God. It would, other people would call infinite source. Uh, other people would say uh, the mind of everything that there is, depending uh -oh. on your preference. I heard that and I was laughing so hard. I could, I, I was crying to the point where I almost pissed my pants. I said, yes. Yes. Oh, huh, you, you, you muted yourself. I was just sick of always writing um, God, universe, source on all of my posts. It was just like too long. And then I think I saw it on maybe a TikTok, but that's not an original. I will literally like shout. I don't remember where I saw it somewhere scrolling on social media. And I was like, yes, girl, that is genius. I will god slash universe slash source ever again and then i she just said gus though and then i was the one that was like gus and gaia and this whole like divine union yeshua mary magdalene like the the lover's card and tarot like all of these imagery started coming in my mind and i was like gus and gaia are like the perfect fucking couple they're my actual parents if i can just be like okay hey, everything else is fucked but i'm always supported by Gus and Gaia then let's move and honestly that's been the last even just four months of my life and again oh, that's strengthening yeah. like when you if you've ever had an injury where you do have to rehab you get frustrated you're like I used to be able to pick up 150 pounds and I can't even pick up this five pound weight what the fuck is you almost think like what's wrong with me but you oh, have man. to have that nurturing and that patience with yourself that if you were willing to do something like I did, and I think, Zachary, you've done similar things where you have taken a part of your life and you've been like, I am lining the bridge with TNT. There is no and I'm flicking my cigarette at that bitch and walking away. That's Knowing that I cannot, like, I, I cannot return. There is nothing to return to. I decimated it. Mm -hmm. That level, and if you can actually come back from that and be like, hey, that was, that was some real fucking intense recovery. Remember that I did that thing for a reason. What was the reason why I walked? Oh yeah, because fucking dragons were screaming in my ear and telling me that I was never going to do all the things that they told me that was necessary and that my soul was calling me to do through all the healings the akashic records the crystals the the new moon and the full moon and like all of the spiritual shit that i was learning and remembering none of that was going to matter if i was still living in a cage as a perfect suburban housewife i hear you baby and well i came to you last year when i really hit rock bottom with my business and not only because I was rock bottom with my business. It was like I had to transition as a person, literally. And that's why I joined the Sex Money Power. Mm -hmm. I was in awe of that three-day event and we talked about this in private. This coming Monday, kids, is the 18th of April. Next month exactly has been six months since that event. And I'm in awe of myself right now. I didn't even wait a full-fledged week, I believe. I was listening to Karen talk about uh, how she was rehabbing herself and doing this, that, and third. And I think you were doing it for about like a, about a month or two. And mm -hmm. you said that you were making major changes left and the right. And I saw it in you. I said, yeah, it's the truth. It's not bullshit. It's the truth. And then you said on the last day, I want all you have to picture yourself in six months. Not even six months, like three months. From now. What are you doing? This, that, and third. And then I just started coming up with it. I think exactly that same day. I left this house. I went to the store and I could hear my own voice say, okay. I'm doing this at by that point. And then 
I just went and did it, like within a few days. Like these boots, right here. These boots yeah. right here. If anybody could see it. <laughs> on November 22nd, I started putting them on. Not even for just like maybe two hours. I said, okay, I, I just want to train this. I just want to train this by word. And then lo and behold, 30 minutes. And then it evolved to two hours. And then before I know it, winter came. Winter came and I was used to it. I could hear other people at my job. Oh, these shoes suck. They hurt. And me, I'm just saying in my mind, oh, I feel sorry for y'all. <laughs> sorry for y'all because I'm already used to this. And then lo and behold, I take these boots off and I put other shoes on. I'm like some Goku in a Dragon Ball when he finally isn't an adult. And he takes off that weight, weight of gear that he has. And everybody's like, oh shit, what is this? It's so heavy. What have you been doing these past three years? Oh, training, that's what I've been doing. And then lo and behold, I'm just like quicker, faster. And I even do that still right now. It may be now spring time, but every single morning after I take my shower, if I'm not going to work in them, I put them on for about 30 minutes to about maybe two hours max. And then after that, take them off and then off to the races I roar. Now, I'm it's, even- it's, it's little hacks like that. Do you know what I mean? Like mine was my dog. I was not a hiker ever. I did like you've known me as a hiker always, but before 2020, I was not a hiker. And like that was part of it was that I got a dog and he was a puppy and he needed to be hiked and I needed alone time. And <laughs> now I'm like, I'm taking people on mountains and they're like, I'm in, not only impressing myself, but these are people who have known me for a while and they're like, you just come up here by yourself. I'm like, yeah. I'm on a fucking mountain. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right. Last last year, I literally got trapped on the mountain, and search and rescue had to come and get me. And I still was just like, pretty cool. As like some other shit popped off and like went on a whole wild ride. And it's like, okay, you have you get to a point where like, oh shit, that was a pothole. Oops. Hopefully, didn't <laughs> fuck up my alignment too much, right? Versus yeah, there's the everyday bumps in the road. There's everyday adjustments. But yeah, every now and then you hit that turn a little too sharp, and you're like, oh, curb check. <laughs> Oh, or man. whatever it, it's okay it's it's a little bit more jarring but it doesn't like stop you everything doesn't need to be like a reason to turn on your hazards and pull over to the side of the road and like flag someone down to check it for you like no you're fine you fucking bumped into the curb Oops. i agree as we get ready to wrap up this episode kids i want to share some stuff that i actually have been eating and now so drinking. I just bought this thing called unsweetened pumpkin seed butter. It's been a long time since I had something like this. I used to eat uh, sunflower seed butter some years ago and it just fell out of love with me. And I understand why, because it kind of had some sugars. <laughs> <laughs> kind of had some sugars. And I said, oh, no, I can't fuck with that. So I had a craving about a few days ago. And I said, oh, what's this? So lo and behold, I found this lovely alternative about two days ago. And I wound up, not even two days ago, I think just yesterday. Yeah, yesterday I found it and I got it one day in mail. And I said, oh, okay, let's try this with everything. And lo and behold, this shit is slamming. I can feel my muscles even more just eating it. Oh, God. And it makes me feel justified that every single thing I've been through since 2019 has had a purpose. I don't eat the donuts. I don't eat the muffins. I don't eat the candy. I don't eat none of that yash. But that's okay. That's okay. I don't need it because... Now it feels like the food that I'm eating really is clearing from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I was literally checking out my skin. And I said, all the dark rings are almost gone. 
And it bugs me out when I look at myself in the mirror. And I still do uh, naked mirror work. I still do that. I still do that every single morning. And my rap goes something like this. And I hug myself. I hug myself. And I say these words out loud. I love me from the hair on my head to the soles of my feet. There's no negotiations. None. And it goes uh, something like this after. All these other huns up in here that I look, they didn't even got to say a word to themselves. That's fine. That is fine. But I love all of me. And then I just go and say, congratulations, dude, for making it another day. And just keep going and going and going until I said, okay, turn around. And then I just do the muscle flex and I'm checking the back of my skin and I'm saying every day I'm getting better, every day I'm getting stronger. And it even feels better because another best-selling author, she actually said to me, oh, why don't you read this thing called Feeling This Secret? And lo and behold, I read it. Not like read it, read it, but I heard it more so by way of an audio. And I've been doing that, get this, exactly two months, Monday. And I'm getting the shit that we've been doing, you and I, together. And it feels even stronger. It feels even stronger. The law of attraction stuff, the mind work, and much, much more. I said, uh, hun, you're muted. That's what the back to basics boot camp was all about, actually. It was just like really getting those foundational things so that more and more, when you even hear someone say it a little bit differently, you can, oh shit, I've heard this before. Uh, oh wait, uh. this is exactly, hold on. She's been teaching that like a, a lot of the things that, I don't tell people this very often, mostly because I don't want them to feel patronized, but like I give my clients homework that I give my kids, right? <laughs> like that's what we're doing is we have to go through this divine reparenting of ourselves and no longer be like, well, I need to heal the inner child and this happened. I'm like, okay, cool. But a child's mind created all of that. You have a super conscious mind now. So how can we rewrite these things? How can we no longer be moving from those spaces yes honoring these things may have happened in your life but also like it's pretty bullshit to be like well this really traumatic thing happened to me when I was four and that's the reason why I am the way I am and everyone just needs to like like one of my favorite things that one of my mentors said was your triggers aren't other people's problems true and I was like oh, oh shit okay and then the other thing he said was how other how people react to your truth is also not your problem there's only one thing. That's you. Yeah. That's only you. Yeah, that's it. And also just knowing that like if you're having a conversation like this or you have a spout with your boy boyfriend or you have a thing and some surprise bill, like all of that is still just you testing like where are you at? Are you actually are you actually moving from the thing that you say that you're moving from? Or are there places that you're still moving from that? You know, it's usually either like for me and most of my clients, it's usually the inner four-year-old that runs the show or the <laughs> inner 16-year-old whore. Like <laughs> the rebellious teenager that doesn't want to do shit. Like that we all we tend to attract very like people, but those are the two aspects of our younger self that tend to come in. Either the very traumatized innocent child that saw some shit go down, that didn't know how to interpret it, and has then been acting in this state ever since. And then also the, the rebellious or abandoned teenager that kind of felt that at some point or another, their family just was like, mm, yeah, well, that one's a lost cause. It's fine. Yeah. Right? So those two aspects of you, they can, they, you can acknowledge that they existed and accept that they existed, but we also have so many resources and tools that allow us to then heal those and then move from the now, right? Like how does healed Karen move? I say all the time that my, I, my kid's dad is the perfect, most amazing husband for unhealed Karen. He took such good care of me. Like I would vote, like I look at things and like we were so madly and deeply and uh, authentically in love with each other. 
but I kept growing and I kept shifting and I kept moving. And in very many ways, he is the exact person that I, I met and married 15 years ago. And that's not saying anything negative about him. But when you have outgrown, again, this container, you can't be mad that your roots got so big that you broke the clay pot mm-hmm. and you were bound up in. Right? Like, that, there's no reason in getting mad about that. Like, if you're a, if you're a gardener and you come out and one of your plants is like, you feel, you feel, you're like, oh shit, I didn't get you in a bigger pot soon enough. Fuck my <laughs> bro. I'm, I'm bad. Right? But as the plant, the plant just got to a point that literally, like, just busted the pot open. Like, sorry. Like, that you can't glue that shit it's broken i'm like that's just what happened but how beautiful that we can there's so many people out there that would look at the life that i live and could look at it from such a more victimized standpoint and that's uh-huh. the work that i think that dragon medicine allows us to have is taking that 100 percent responsibility and turning something that i could very easily be like he was abusive, he was a narcissist, he was this, he was that, and put this whole thing on him. But that doesn't feel good in my body to do. I know how I showed up for 15 years. I know what I did. I know all of those paths. And I also know that none of it would have happened if he hadn't contracted to do it, if our kids hasn't hadn't contracted to do it, right? Like my belief system allows me not to bypass things that I've done but to anchor them is like yeah that's a part of my story and thank god I can show that like yes you can do the resilient like let's let's get it survival mode but it's fucking exhausting and what I'm here to actually teach is the thriving mode the moving from the fuck yes the moving from abundance and flow the moving from I'm a large clear light and any fire like if you've ever watched um Howl's Moving Castle Calcifer the little fire demon in that you have to throw fire like throw him a log you have to give him fuel you have to give him something to burn up so again coming back to that refiner's fire analogy is that when you can come to peace with the fact that maybe your path of least resistance looks like fire and brimstone to most other people and start getting off on that and start being like oh yeah i can do it i'm gonna go back in I'm going to get all these codes. I'll see you guys on the other side. Like you're, you become one of those people that's like, Oh, firewalk. No, no big deal. Right? <laughs> uh, they're like, ah, how do you do that? The bottoms of your feet. But you just fucking do it and you do it and you do it and it becomes who you be. And that is, that's all you have to do. That's going to pop off your business. That's going to pop off your nonprofit. That's going to pop off your campaign. That's going to pop off your art, whatever it is that your soul mission is. The reason why you are an empath, the reason why you've had all the trauma, the reason why you've suffered in this fucking lifetime, why you're the black sheep, why you're any of that is because, cool, I'm resilient as fuck. Let's go see what I can do with it. If, I'm not <laughs> sharp, if I have gone through fire, like been banged out that many times in the forge, what the fuck can I do? How, how impenetrable am I? I hear you, babe. Let's all go right. fuck around and find out. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, I agree, I agree. So the last thing before we actually wrap this bad boy up because she's got to go eat, I'm sure. And I got this lovely pepper. I've been making stuffed peppers, non-lactose uh, friendly for, uh, I would say about, maybe about almost a week now. Thank you, Arlene Howell, if you're ever listening to this, my dear second next week, I'll say you made me a happy man. All right. So, uh, my dear Karen, you're a geek. I'm a geek. In the world of geekdom, recently, there is something called Super Mario Brothers mm-hmm. animated movie. Without spoilers, how was it, dear? It was amazing. I took my kids on uh, opening day because wow. I am we we are a Super Mario family. Uh, there were some things I won't lie. If you are as hardcore Mario as our family is, there were a couple of like things that you thought they were gonna do that they didn't end up doing. So they they have a chance to bring that back to Super Mario too. I'm sure they will. But it was 
it was the perfect combination of like the Super Mario Galaxy universe with some old school RPG vibes and Super Mario Kart. There's a really intense like Super Mario Kart scene that goes on and the actors were just really good. It, it was really well done and I highly recommend it. If you ever played any Mario game, you're going to enjoy it. And it was a great time. Oh, God. I got to watch that movie. But there is a future guest that I actually will have on this podcast eventually. She's on a weight loss journey. Hi, Jilly Love, if you're listening to this. Uh, she got me heated earlier today. She went to go see Super Mario Brothers. And on her YouTube channel, for the, a short that she did. She posted a scene from that movie and I said, Jilly love you, crazy goofball woman. Why did you have to show that scene? Now I'm, now I'm not gonna forget it. And I'm trying to be spoiler free as can be until it gets on demand. That is tough. That is oh, tough. Oh, it's true. It's oh, true. God, and I even said this as a really girl. I said, like maybe a few months ago. The pandemic made me appreciative of different things. One thing was being able to be around other people, but at the same point in time, I'm getting old. And I'm finding that going to the movies is not the same as it used to be when I was in my 20s or younger. I Honestly, I went to an 11.30 matinee on opening day and there was like still hardly anybody there. We got some of the best seats in those luxury loungers. You just kick your feet up. And it is one of those movies that I say, like, fucking go hardcore and go 3D. Like, seriously. <laughs> they, it was off. It's one of those movies that when you are like us in the 90s and early 2000s, there's those certain movies that you know that while you can see it in standard, it was made to be seen in 3D. And this movie is one of those movies. Hey, that's, that's, that's all I'm going to say. This movie was made for the big screen 3D experience. So if y'all are going to do it, this is my not endorsed endorsement of that fucking movie. Oh, man. And I'm getting hyped just thinking. All right, there. Now let's hit the outro. There are three things that I would usually ask, and now something had to be rewired. Your desires of the future, my dear dragon doula, are. Didn't we just cover this already? Personal future or all future? Any future, my dear. May it be oh. Star Trek, may it be whatever you want. Your yeah. desires of the future, dear, hit it. Yeah, my desire of the future is to get moving quicker on this new Earth thing on a collective level it would just be really cool to see it popping off in a faster in a faster way to get us in a place where it's not three four eight nine ten generations from now that we're realizing a star trek future but if we did it in this fucking lifetime that would be cool i love that desire of the future oh man all right dear if not now, I'm saying this, and I will follow up with you on it. Can I have about three people you would recommend to join me in this interview segment? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you should reach out to Gabrielle Clamp. She's another dragon over in Scotland. She's amazing. She's got some really powerful like very powerful dragon codes when it comes to embodying that level of just ferociousness, ferociousness in a very like, you would not realize how much power comes in this little package, <laughs> right? Ooh. She's amazing. Um, another one, well, she's about to go on maternity leave, so maybe not Erin. Um, oh, Erin, Ryan, me and her, we tried to talk, but uh, she did she ghosted me so i had to say goodbye to her oh yeah no she's literally gonna have a baby in the next three weeks so that's probably a lot of it <laughs> um i love who else could you have on here well, what um, about your mentor mindy mindy sarton could be fun 
I don't know how often she does podcast interviews, but she could be really fun. She's a blast, actually. I just wrapped up my containers with her and she's just a ton of fun. Um, and then someone else that you could play with is Sven, actually, in our power play group. He could be a lot of fun. He is um, one of my, he's actually a really good close friend of mine personally, but he is a handyman who does the ascension. He's one of those good, solid, divine masculine men who's learning and he does a lot of um, kink and BDSM, polyamory, like conscious connection <laughs> work. It's, he's a fun guy. He's a fun guy. I think that you guys would really get along, actually. So, uh oh, he's at the BDSM. That's that's actually making uh, my first fiance whimper right now. So I bet wow. I can hear. <laughs> master, oh master. Okay, those are good recommendations, and I'll ask you in private again about them. All right, now here we go. What can I, Zachary Shadow or Zachary Shadow Watts, depending on the preference? Do for you going forward, dear. Let's just pump up power play, babe. That's where I'm at right now. I really want to see that community that we have grow in a way that's going to really be nourishing to everyone because I see it as a cauldron, like this mixing pot where collaborations and other things can start popping off. So Power Play is my weekly subscription where we do new moon and full moon rituals every single month. And then we also do new earth code act leadership activations and um, dragon invocations where we are really invoking that dragon power within ourselves and our human lives. So I do go, I go live weekly. I'm going to be putting in more like journal prompts and like activities within there now that some other like, it got wild there for a hot second. I popped off power play and guess what? It was like, are you actually ready to play? So it's going to uh -huh. be really fun. And I'm ready to really just build out that community. So just sharing your wins within the community, also sharing about the community within your external community. Yeah. Oh, all right, kids. I'll take a few seconds to do that right now. All right, so kids out there, uh, Karen's been playing what this thing called a uh, power play for about several months now. And she was telling me in private about it. And I was wanting to be part of it, I was, but I needed a little bit more stuff from her. And she's telling me, oh, you get the dragon codes, you get the new leadership codes, you get uh, basically almost everything I've done. I said, oh, shit. okay, this sounds absolutely good. And lo and behold, it's the truth. Almost every single thing that she's listed, the codes, regardless of a new dragon or new earth, uh, the back to basics that she talked about earlier, the <clears throat> heal, everything she's got is at the right. But here's the thing. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I, yeah, you get every single course I've ever made but from ever until when I opened Power Play, which was like a month ago. So there's like 40 hours worth of content that you just get all access to the whole time and you can come in and out whenever so it's also like you can cancel you vibe out for two weeks don't want it whatever most people are loving it and we're continuing to grow it and it's awesome so oh, yeah man. definitely like the dragon's fall is so fucking worth it just within itself because it's everything that i've done for the last right three on, years babe. and i stay there because i love it it's absolutely great if we even get a uh, my moon rituals and everything else and i can feel it and i don't even have to be there i could just go to work go to work and then come on back As a matter of fact i did that last week i did that last week i said okay i'm spending time with her she's doing this about like uh 15 20 minutes i think it was and then i felt even more charged and i just went to work from there not work as in my day-to-day -day job, kids. Doing this, doing my coaching and everything else that is making me feel better. And I don't regret it. With that said, no regrets about this. One goal, one aim, one road, one focus, one track, one life, one source, one infinite power. And that's levels. 
even if it sounds like I'm venting or she was venting, we are what is called passionate. We're passionate about what we do on this earth. We're passionate about those around us. And if you got a problem with that, tough shit. <laughs> That's it. And with that said, I will be back this coming Saturday with, I'm sure, maybe five to six more episodes of the show because I got to start roaring again. I got it. After months of being away. And not only that, I got to start bothering people for interviews as the black dragon and the black lion. I, I. With that said, thank you very much for tuning in to where Zachary Shiloh once roamed around the earth, where universal grounding has been partaken called Black Lion's Domain, or in this case, Black Dragon's Domain. See you in the next one. Bye, kids out there. Yeah.